So I just want to do a, a quick and dirty video on how to um, correct the timing on a track. So you might have a tune that's like a vinyl rip or something that's been recorded on a turntable where there's a bit of wow and flutter, which means that the timing sort of shifts around and you go to mix with that tune and you find that either the beats aren't quite lined up or you get to the end of the track and it starts to like wander off, get faster or slower. It happens to me all the time. Some vinyls just aren't that good. Some turntables just aren't that good. So I just had a track that I played recently on one of the live streams where I didn't realize that the beat grid was like completely out towards the end of the song. Um, so I just wanted to do a video to show people the um, show people the process for sorting it out. So first and foremost, you're going to need Ableton because Ableton is the best thing at doing this. And this is the thing that I use. Now, it, you can get a free trial on it. Uh, but it's limited in terms of what you can do. So if you haven't got Ableton, look into getting it if this is something that you want to do for a lot of songs. So opening up Ableton, first thing you want to do is drag the track into an audio track and you'll see that it loads up there. Now there's a few things to look at here. So the first one that you want to look at is the track tempo, which is down here. So what this does is this identifies the tempo of this entire clip that you've imported. We can see that it's 145.23 BPM. Now, there's not a chance in hell that anyone is recording songs and exporting them and mastering them at 145.23 BPM. So I, can, I know that that's slightly wrong. And then the next thing you want to look at here is the top left corner. You've got your project tempo. So regardless of what this says down here, when you export this track when it's finished, it's going to export it at the BPM that's at the top here. So given that we're at 145.23 BPM, I'm going to export this track as 145. So what you want to do is click on this and just type in 145. You can also use the mouse to like drag up, drag down, whatever. But for accuracy, just type it in. Next thing you want to do is turn the metronome on, which is this little icon here. So we're going to be balancing this track against the metronome. Um, to make sure that it's in time and I'm sorry but there's no way of cheating your way through this you have to be able to listen to music and you have to be able to hear what's happening your brain's got to be able to differentiate between the beats the metronome and whether they're matched up that just takes practice takes time can't help you with that so next thing we want to do is look down here drag the bar with a little magnifying glass to zoom in or out and basically this yellow marker it's called a transient marker and what this does is this identifies beats so this yellow one is set at the start and we want that to be right at the very first beat. Now if I just hit spacebar, which is play, what you'll hear now is the metronome and the beats. The track will start playing, the metronome will start playing. We want them to be basically lined up and uh, let's see how far we get before they start to drift. So far, so good. I'm gonna skip forward a bit. Right, so, so far in this track, it seems okay in the intro, and this first section is the only bit you're gonna be mixing. You're not gonna be mixing over the vocals or whatever. But I know for a fact that when we get to later on in this track, it starts to go a bit wild. So if you can hear that, you can hear that uh, the metronome's slightly ahead, which means that the beat's actually behind where it should be. And um, by the way, if you want to tab between the two views on Ableton, you just literally press tab. And what I did then was this little blue icon here with the headphone thing at the bottom. That's your, that's your overall volume for things like your metronome and stuff. And it was a little bit quiet in the mix. I couldn't really hear it. So I just dragged this up to full so I could hear the metronome a bit louder. Um, but if we go back to this track, what we need to do is try and find the bit in this song where the beat grid starts to wander away from where it should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to listen just up to the drop and just check that everything's in sync. Right, now I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is if you see on the timeline at the bottom here, you've got these little grey ticks, and when you hover over them, you get this little grey marker as well. So if you double-click that, what that'll do is it'll drop one of them transient markers like what we've got at the start there, 
And any time you do that, any any changes that you make towards stretching this end of the track, it's not going to affect the section before then. So these basically act like anchor points. So this yellow marker and this yellow marker is going to make sure that this entire thing stays exactly where it should do if we make changes to this bit over here. So let's listen past the breakdown and let's see if we can figure out where this track starts to mooch about. I can tell already it's starting to go. So what we want to do is find out these are your bar markers at the top here. See 92 bars, 93 bars. We want to basically work out where the beats are and what's going on in this little section. And we want to essentially just drag it. Now I can tell by eye, just by looking at this, that this is where it's going to be. But let's grab one of them, double click, move it to 92. And let's just see if that makes a difference. So that sounds like it's more in time to me now. Let's just see what happens when a beat comes back in. But bear in mind, it doesn't have to be perfect on the metronome, but as long as it's if it's slightly out, slightly ahead or slightly behind, it doesn't matter. As long as it's slightly ahead or slightly behind the whole track, you can definitely use it to DJ with. So let's move along in the track and see where we're at. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, it sounds slightly out at this point, ever so slightly, so I'm going to just zoom in, which you can do by magnifying glass, <clears throat> excuse me, on the top bar there. Just click and drag it down to zoom, drag it up to zoom out. So I can see that this beat here, see this grey marker, so it's slightly ahead of the line. Now, these transient markers, they're not always accurate. You have to use your brain and use your knowledge of where the kick drums and stuff are to kind of fine tune it. But I think if we click and drag this here to there, I think that's going to make a big difference. Let's have a listen. starting to get slightly ahead of itself so I'm going to just bring it in see the way the metronome kind of lined up a bit better and uh, experience tells me that's probably where we need to be at I think it'll be alright for the rest of the song we're just going to zoom along to the end and just see where we're up to So yeah, that's that track sorted. Now, I think I've already messed with this in the past. I can't remember. I think I already kind of straightened it out, but didn't pay attention to the end or something. Like I say, came to finding out when I was DJing with it that it wasn't quite perfect, but we've made some adjustments to it. You can see the little transient markers we've put in there. So now all we need to do is export it and it's ready to DJ with. So file, export, Settings all here. I export my tracks as FLAX because I can store all the metadata with them. doesn't work with WAVs, but you always, always, always want to export in a lossless format. So don't export it as an MP3, especially if the track was already an MP3 to begin with because you're exporting it twice. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So quick and dirty, less than 10 minute video on how to uh, adjust tracks in Ableton if their beat grids are all over the place for vinyl rips and that kind of thing. Um, any questions, drop them in the comments below. I might well redo this again at some point in the future, but I've been dying to do something like this for ages. So let me know what you thought and let me know if it's been useful for you and take it easy.